Good morning guys, my name is Della, also known as Natural Ghana Girl and today I'm off to see an amazing female vocalist, Naya. She released a single not too long ago called Choke and I'm going to see her and interview her right now. So guys, I'm here to share with you another episode of the Move Me Back series and today I am with Naya who is an amazing vocalist, artist. What can I call you? I mean, have I missed anything? Uh, there's a lot more, but yeah. um, we'll highlight it. We'll highlight it as we yes, go. Thank yes. you, thank you so much for having me. Thank Della, you Della, aka here. Natural Girl. You're famous, so you know, I'm this not, is, I'm not this is, <laughs> this, it's a so big so deal. Cool. I really appreciate you bringing me on the show. <laughs> And it's, it's been well overdue. I know we talked about it before mm -hmm. to be on this platform together. So yes. I'm looking forward to having the finally. discussions. And we finally and got sharing. to meet, right? Yes, yes. So we met a few years ago when you had just recently arrived in Ghana. Yes, right? yes. And you wanted to start out in music. Yes, yes. And so we spoke about that and we spoke about a lot of different things as well. Yes. So first of all, tell me, are you Ghanaian? Yes, I'm full Ghanaian. You're full Ghanaian? Yes. Okay. And you moved back to Ghana when? Um, I actually officially would say I stayed and moved in around November of 2019. Mm -hmm. But I made my, my first trip back mm -hmm. um, before that March of 2019. Okay. Yes. And so when you moved back, did you know you wanted to do music? Yeah, that was actually the plan before mm -hmm. I just randomly just had to say, boom, I gotta go. Right. This is it, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, before actually moving back, yeah. that's what I mean by have such a broaden background and versatile background mm -hmm. is I actually have in uh, technology background as well. Okay. Um, I actually studied information technology mm -hmm. uh, in the school of Sheridan College in Canada because actually okay. that's where I was born. Right, I was right, born right. in Toronto. Okay. Uh, big up T-Dot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so basically, when I was living there and mm -hmm. working in that field, I was an IT analyst for some time. Mm -hmm. And I worked for years doing the same job. Yeah. And um, I thought at a point in time that I wanted to expand, but I realized that it just felt like a dead end for mm -hmm. me. I didn't see the growth and the progress that I wanted ahead of me right. for my future. And I mm -hmm. said, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Yes. That's what I had to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. And it's like that thing yeah. that gnaws in the back of your mind. Yeah. Like you should do what you want to do. Do what you wow. want to do. I know it's hard, mm -hmm. but you can do it. Yeah. And I have to say that I have very special people in my life that also pushed me. Mm -hmm. And especially my immediate family, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad. And especially my sister-in-law, shout out to Sylvia. <laughs> She's actually uh, in the arts as well. She's okay. a, an actress. Oh. Um, and that's her background so she was always the one to feel me mm. and say like yo you need to tap into the real talent that you have because yeah. I see it in you mm. right and for her to acknowledge it my brother saw it as well so that was enough oh. for me to actually pursue it and at mm. that time I would have been about let's say 23 24 okay, okay. was when I officially started to take mm. on music so you felt like you were kind of like at, you got to a crossroads where you were yes. like do i take the conventional way or exactly. do i take the, the what my heart is telling exactly. me to do exactly and you chose yes and i just chose wow. so funny enough the funny thing about the story of why i came from 2019 is I actually got fired from the last job that I really? worked Really? Hey! Yeah. Let's get fired! <laughs> <laughs> they let me go, okay. and there's a lot of politics behind that, but uh -huh. um, that was my sign. Believe it or not, yeah. I, I was in the car mm -hmm. <laughs> crying because I was stressed oh. about why this was happening, yeah. and now I'm confused what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I had spoken to my best friend, uh, shout out to Cleo, and she told me, like, no, no, this is your sign. Yeah. You can go. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. she knows how much I love the music. She yeah. knows how invested I've been in it. Even from high school, I've been a music head. Mm -hmm. So she saw that too. So she's like, just go. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. If it doesn't work, you can start over again. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so that was my ticket right there mm -hmm. between her and my sister in law and just my family being so supportive. That was enough for me to do it. And don't, don't get me wrong. It's not like it was all smooth sailing. Like mm. My parents will always be the ones to be the most concerned about my situation. Yeah. And they weren't the happiest mm -hmm. <laughs> when I told them I wanted to just randomly come to Ghana because yeah. they were already in Ghana. Oh, they were already yeah, in Ghana? Yeah, they actually okay. left. They actually left and moved to Ghana when I was about 18 years old. Oh. Yes, that's actually when I had just finished high school. Okay, so you had a basis 
the yeah. place here already? Yeah, oh. yeah. That's the funny thing. They had already moved back, so they had already been here for years right. uh, before I actually made a decision. Mm. But I guess, the, and I understand now, living here, mm -hmm. that they were worried about how difficult and how different it would be. Yeah. And I think that, I guess that ties into that big contrast of how us as diasporans need to be home mm. and relearn our environment because yeah. we're so accustomed to an environment that's really not ours, mm -hmm. that we think we belong to, but we literally live yeah. like strangers yeah. in a place that's not for us, mm -hmm. yet a place that does belong to us, we still are like strangers. Yes. So yes. then when I came here, that's how I felt. Like, damn, like, okay. Like, I was able to be baby a little bit mm. when I was in Kumasi, because that's where they stay. Whoa. But then when I had to come to Accra, I was like, whoa. Like, <laughs> that's this is, some adulting, right? Yeah, like, this is, <laughs> this is serious now. I have to step up my game. So mm. definitely that was, I would say, the hardest part, adjusting, so, adjusting to that. So why did you choose to come to Ghana to do music? Why didn't you do it in Canada, where you were? Funny enough, um, it's not because there's not enough talent that gets highlighted in Canada. Mm -hmm. I just feel like this in some similarities when it comes to what particular industries mm -hmm. are patronized. I feel like it is similar in terms of how Ghana is versus Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there's a lot of programs that do support Canadian musicians, mm -hmm. but to get on a large scale, we know that most big musicians we know, yeah. your uh, Justin Bieber and Drake and the likes, mm -hmm. um, they had to travel to the States. Mm -hmm. And we know that the infamous place for that is LA. Yeah. So believe it or not, Ghana actually wasn't my first choice. Mm -hmm. Even though I had a full conversation <laughs> with my brother about the pros and cons yeah. of moving here and my sister-in-law because we had a whole discussion about why it was not probably the best idea because mm. of the concerns of how like i said the great areas that come with the industry yeah. here um they didn't know that in my mind i was like guys i actually wanted to go to la <laughs> wow. but i just didn't tell them they're knowing it now because yeah. i'm saying it publicly yeah. because i knew that that would have been hard too definitely mm. but all the resources that i need are there mm -hmm. however Number one, just seeing from then how quickly and at like how strong of an impact mm -hmm. and at its speed the Afrobeats market was growing. Yes. I said, no, I have to tap into this mm -hmm. because um, even being someone who literally grew up as a, a native R&B mm -hmm. <laughs> addict, mm -hmm. uh, jazz, blues, and the, yeah. and the likes, mm -hmm. I realized that not only is it because it's my culture, but just hearing the numerous amount of genre fusions from our sound that are in yeah. Afrobeats, it was just so fascinating to me. Mm. And how it's even grown till now, yeah. it's a prime example of why I made the right decision. Yes, because absolutely. everything that I had predicted then, with it mm. being fused with different genres that we listen to, whether it's reggae, dancehall, soca, mm -hmm. um, you know already R&B, which is yeah. heavily mm -hmm. influenced in Afrobeats yeah. now today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is why it was a good idea, number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, number two, I said to myself, why not be someone to pioneer that sound yeah. on a different scale, my own sound, out of the country that I, I'm from? Because right. we need to help develop that, and I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my bigger vision beyond being an artist is helping to contribute to artist development and growth in this industry however I can. Mm -hmm. So if, when God blesses me with these opportunities to mm -hmm. go out there, to do these things, I'm going to make it my mission to bring that knowledge so that we can start that here. Okay. Yes. So tell me this. So when you decided, okay, I'm coming to Ghana, how did you think that you were going to support yourself and do music and all of that? Did you have fears about all of that? Definitely. Everybody's scared. <laughs> I like, I, I grew, I've, I've loved Ghana for a while, mm. but at the same time, the reality is that my real love for Ghana didn't start till 2011. Beyond just music, mm. I was afraid to move to this country because when I was a kid, I hated this country right. uh -huh. because I wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm. Nothing was normal to me. Yeah. I came here the first time I came, I was 95, I was four years old. Oh. So I was a disaster. When I came. <laughs> but after that, constantly coming, especially mm -hmm. 2011, it mm -hmm. opened my eyes. I'm like, yeah. there was just some logic that wasn't processing well with me. I'm like, mm. this beautiful country. Yeah. I have my own people here. We have mm -hmm. all these resources. Why are there these contrasts of high and low and there's no balance in between? Mm -hmm. And I said, how do I, how do I involve myself in that? Yeah. And it just felt so close to home, literally, because it is my home. Mm -hmm. So it was a spiritual energy that called me here. Yeah. Because literally, when I would leave after making trips here, I would cry. 
Oh, I've heard that so many times. I would literally cry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, never yeah, yeah. forget 2015 when mm -hmm. I came. That was when I actually came for my birthday for the first time. Mm -hmm. I came in February. Okay. Called my mom when I was leaving, and I was crying like someone oh. was lost in the family. Yeah. It was so crazy. And she's like, why are you crying? Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to yeah. go. Like, that's how bad it was. Yeah, yeah. And it made me realize that that's because this is my home. Mm -hmm. And when I'm taking away from where I am, it's like I'm stripping myself. Yes. And then going back to a stranger land that I had to just say that I, I belong to because I was born here. Mm -hmm. But it's not my land. Yeah. Even the people that live there and run it, that's mm. not their land. Yeah, yeah. So there's so many misidentities there. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Even though, uh, in, res in retrospect, Canada in general, especially Toronto, um, uh, specifically, is one of the most diverse cities in the world. Yeah. Right? You have different cultures mm. and different backgrounds. But at the end of the day, there's a reason why. Because there's no real connection that consolidates them. That's yeah. why you have a little town here for India. Mm. You have a little town here for the Caribbeans. You have right. a little town because they've created okay. their own community, mm. right? But obviously, we'll, we'll be together um, as people of the minority group, as they'll say. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we form these communities because we feel close to each other. Mm -hmm. But why can't we do that in our real environment? Yeah, That's what yeah. I did. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm. And then there's so many restrictions um, that come with that, being this type of person. In a land like that, I mean, yeah. you know that already. Yeah, when you're yeah, looked absolutely. at as a minority, mm. they always put you last. Yes. And they make it harder for you. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way, knowing that you have full control mm. in a country that belongs to you. Yeah. So what are you afraid of? That's yeah. just what I thought. And I was like, I'm wasting my time. So you were time. pretty much fearless. Yeah. It was you're like, like, you're just going to do it. It was like, forget it. I'm just going to go. Yeah. What's the worst that's going to happen? Mm. This is my land. I'll learn how to survive in it. They survive in it. Mm. So why can't I do it? Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what happened. Okay. So do you speak any of the local languages here? Um, from my background, my parents are both Akan. They're both Ashanti. Mm -hmm. So I do speak the local dialect of mm -hmm. Chi. I'm not fluent, so please, <laughs> no, no testing, no testing, guys. I'm going to embarrass you guys. Uh -huh. But I'm pretty well, uh, well spoken when it comes to oh, the okay. language to a certain degree. So do you feel that that helped you or do you feel Definitely, that? definitely. Mm -hmm. Because even though I can't articulate myself the way I would want when yeah. speaking, I hear most of what right. is being said. Yeah, so then saying. you understand the street lingo, you understand yes. what's going on around you, yes. so it helps you to learn more mm -hmm. about the culture. And that's what I'm thankful for. Yeah. So shout out to my dad <laughs> for forcing that. Because even though my mom was so fixated on speaking the tongue of the land in Canada, which yeah. is English, mm. um, even though French is also one, the main languages would be English. Yeah. So she was trying to learn through me. Uh, so that didn't make it easier. My dad used to always yell at her, like, teach her how to speak the local yeah. language. Like, she learns out at school. I think you a know. lot of our parents, to be fair, a lot of our parents at a certain generation would speak English at home and not necessarily speak our, our actual dialect. And right. so I think a lot of us growing up, we missed out on certain things. Because I know it's very true for me, like my parents didn't really teach me the exactly. local language. So, exactly. But out of nosiness, exactly. I was able well, to understand. I'm like, mm, I wonder what they're saying. And yes. so then I would pick up things. Right. And that's how I kind of got to understand. But right. otherwise, I would be completely you lost. lost you know? So like, do you understand like LA fluently? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can understand every. If you say something, I can I absolutely understand. That's, that's it. amazing. And like, I can hear myself. Like, I want to talk, speak it, but I can hear myself saying it. And but when it comes out, it's like, what was that? That's not what you said in your head. It doesn't really come out. You know, that's different. the biggest thing. Actually, uh, my sister-in-law, her sister, made mm. a good point about that. So me and my sister-in-law had a discussion. She said that our biggest issue, mm. because obviously everybody has a specific dialect or language yes. that is in their head. Mm -hmm. It's a crazy thing how the brain works. Yes. The brain is a very powerful thing. Uh -huh. So it's pretty much interpretation from the brain. Mm -hmm. If you're going to try and translate something in English mm -hmm. to a different language, it'll come out differently. Yes. So it's almost in a way that, mm. even though it sounds weird, I actually yeah. have to say mm. it in my head in yeah. a can yeah. to say it properly. Yes. That's number one. Yeah. So that it doesn't come out odd. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's it's sad to say, but it's an accent that you will have. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> even me, my accent has changed quite a bit since I've been here. Mm -hmm. I've picked different accents because of how they speak here. Yeah. But I have a Toronto accent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So certain pronunciations in the Akan language, it will make it difficult yeah. to pronounce if it's not something that you've actually had time to learn mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, it's not a difficult language to learn. Yeah. It's really how you apply yourself. But mm -hmm. just for you to say that 
how difficult it is to say it and for it to come out is yeah. it's really how you translate it in your head. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, a crazy yeah, thing. Yeah. I feel as well, just to add to what you're saying, that you know, the older you are, sometimes your insecurities as well. You know, us, yeah, you want them to us, laugh. Us, you know, we like to write people, like to laugh at and each laugh other at people. Well, right? You know, so when Trust someone me. tries, they laugh. You, you laugh, don't you? Yeah. So I think you get your insecurities come out, and they're like, oh my gosh, they're gonna laugh at me. But really, yep. you have to push me on that because a child, like, you can get a two-year-old and teach them, and they'll. And of course, because they're a kid. They, yeah, they they're still, their brain is still, but they don't care. Yeah, yeah. When you're an adult, I know. there's this conscious of everybody's watching right. or processing how I'm saying something. Right, it's like, what right. do they think? Mm -hmm. Kids don't care about what you exactly. think. Exactly. That's a problem. So actually, that just brings me on to my next point. When you started singing, because this was the beginning of your career, right? Yes. How did, it, how did you feel? Because obviously singing is a very personal thing. How did you feel getting up there and doing it? Were you full of confidence and you're just like going? Or how did how how was it? Because now you're in um you've just moved back to Ghana and you're learning a lot and now you're trying to develop your talent and all of that. How was your confidence? Uh I'm gonna say that uh, most of my confidence was lifted, like I say, by the support because for the longest I was hiding any mm. love for the music mm. at all. <laughs> mm. And to be fair, even with my, my creative process and how I've developed certain skills, one of them in the beginning was poetry. Oh, okay. I used to write poetry before mm. I actually used to sing or do anything. Wow. But I think that actually tapped into my musical realm when I started learning how to play acoustic, which now I'm not fluent in, so <laughs> I have to pick up on that big time because mm. that really helps to expand your music knowledge. So finding my love to that, mm. I would always love it, but in the background. Mm. I'll hide it. I'll be the bathroom singer. You get it? So I'll be okay. recording on my phone okay. with ideas. From the longest, I think, let's say 10, 11, when I had a phone, I was recording mm -hmm. myself singing. Yeah. Whether it was Aaliyah, or Brandy, or SWV. Oh my gosh, yes. That's definitely what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize then, it's so mm -hmm. funny how God works, that I was teaching myself mm -hmm. slowly and slowly about how I would vocally you know, project myself as a vocalist or as mm. an artist. So as I grew older, I kind of just put it to the side. Right. I didn't say anything about it until one day, I don't know, something in me mm -hmm. decided to tell my sister-in-law because she is in the arts, yeah. what about other talents I have? Mm. And then she was like, oh, okay, you can sing? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, really? Because you know someone can hear or you can sing yeah. or hear yeah. something. I've even had moments people would hear me talk mm. and they used to say because of my tone, it mm. sounds like I sing, yeah. which yeah. is interesting. I, yeah. I don't know about all the vocal mm -hmm. programming mm -hmm. and all that, but yeah. when she said that, she's like, okay, sing. I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to sing right now? She's yeah. like, yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's when I actually sang uh, If I Could Turn the Hands of Time by R. Kelly because it's one of the songs I really like. Mm. So I sang the song and she's like, hmm, like, you have something, yeah. so you should try. Mm. That was enough for me to actually build some confidence oh, to try. Amazing. And that's when I started writing songs. I actually started to write my own songs. I mm. actually wrote my first song literally after she really? had told me that. Like, let's say within a month or so, I had written maybe two songs on my own. Wow. Yeah, so that's literally how it started, where I started to tap into that mm. uh, feeling of confidence of actually trying to create. Yeah. Yeah. Even with all the bashings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. still something was keeping me, apart from her always encouraging me, yeah. because I had already tapped in. Mm -hmm. It's like once you tap in, that no one can stop what you're doing, because mm -hmm. you've tapped into what maybe how they'll say um, God has something intended for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's how I see it, to be fair. Wow. Yeah. Do you know, I can actually... This is a pioneer right here, E.T. Mensa, for the High Life Music Movement. Okay. Um, if many people know well, as I said, acknowledging where Fila's sounds come from, comes from this guy over here. Okay. So he taught him everything he needs to know. Because mm -hmm. when he came to Ghana, that's how the High Life and the Afro Beat movement started oh, for Fila. Okay. So literally all the roots of Afro Beat for Fila's sounds come from High Life and this guy is a pioneer of that. Yes. Okay. Uh, then you have your guy, CK Man, over here, another very popular high life musician with a lot of big hits. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of them, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm always forgetting the name. So that's we, it's, it's vintage. We actually broke one by accident. Really? Yeah. Oh. It was a filler one too. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so we have to be careful. It's called Mama. 
Yes, for I come on my mommy all day, for I come on my mommy. I don't know if you ever heard of that no. before. But that's a big hit from, okay. from TK Man. Okay. Uh, then of course, you know Shabba Ranks. Yes. Shabba. Yes. Yeah, Shabba Ranks yeah. over there. Then our great guy over here, another amazing mm -hmm. high life pioneer, Ebo Taylor, Love and Death. You know this record, a very popular right, record. Right. And as I mentioned to you before, I did a remix to this song yes. on behalf of S1. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Nice. So I can actually relate to what you're saying because yeah. when I was younger, I actually wanted to sing as well. Really? I actually really did, and uh, I would sing. Don't, don't be telling me yeah. that. Don't <laughs> and be telling me that. I would sing in my room all the time, like the Brandy, the Aaliyah, SW. I like, I loved it all. Like okay. I would record, you know, okay, the back okay. in the day, you press record, and then you listen to yourself, and then you wind it back, and you listen again. Yes, like, that's would, what I was doing. I would doing. do all of that, but yes. I never told anybody Anyone. that I could sing because of that's my a, own personal insecurities. It's a natural thing. Yeah. Yeah, and so I never, I never did anything with it. Yeah. So hearing your story, I'm like, oh, so this happens to other people too. Of course. And so we all start somewhere. Yeah, it's so it's a kid that dreams on TV and watching someone. Right. Or you start exactly. singing in your room in the mirror. Right. It's always something. Right. So it's so interesting that you're doing I also picked thing. up a guitar. Oh, so wow. So I can play a little, not a lot, not a lot. Don't <laughs> I can play a little bit. So as you were talking, I was like, oh my wow, gosh, has she crazy. just been reading my <laughs> You know? <laughs> story. Sometimes you all have the same life story and yeah. you don't realize. You it's just crazy. don't see it. So yeah. I love the fact that you decided to run with it and you're following your passion and that's kind of what's brought you here. Yes. So tell me about your first single that you brought out. How was that process for you? Oh doing my God. Because <laughs> um, it's called Choke, right? Yes, Choke. Right, so tell um, me. No, it's not inappropriate, guys. I keep <laughs> getting different explanations of uh, what okay. they think the song so is. So tell me, tell me, what does, it, what does Choke mean? Um, basically, Choke highlights the feeling of someone who is passionately connected to someone mm -hmm. as a significant other and how they how that person makes them feel mm -hmm. so it's like almost like you choke on that feeling mm -hmm. almost of wow like i really like this person and this is the type of way they make me feel right. so even references of being high mm -hmm. on the person in the right. song because that's literally the euphoric type of emotion mm -hmm. that you receive from the person that you're in love with mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah <laughs> so how was it putting it all together did you write that yourself yes i did you did oh yeah. amazing i didn't even know that so i'm getting now Yes. Oh, that's amazing. I actually write all of my songs, to oh, you be honest do? with you. Yeah. Wow. So tell me about your sound. What's your sound? What do you like more? Uh -huh. uh, I'm very eclectic with my sound, mm -hmm. but I'll say that definitely my heart is R&B. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. R&B and old school hip hop. Yeah. Uh, Neo soul, mm -hmm. jazz, because my dad's a jazz guy, so I picked up the jazz love from him. Right. Some Spanish rhythms, Latino rhythms. Oh, wow. Quite a bit. Yeah, that's and not to mention, I can't forget my Caribbeans in Toronto. Uh -huh. I love Caribbean music. I yes. love dance hall. I love soca. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Well, you, you catch me. I've been to Caravana before. Mm -hmm. Everything. So I love, I just love good music, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. But those are the ones that definitely speak to me the most. And you'll definitely hear mm -hmm. as, as representations in my music. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So you did a video. Yes. A joke. Yes. How was it putting that together? How did you feel? How did it even come about? Do you have man? I'm gonna ask you like a ton of questions now. You can answer as you remember. Sure. Did you have management at the time? Yes. Like, how did you pull it together? Did you have to fund it yourself? Tell me how sure. did it, how did it happen? Because man. this is not an easy industry to just at penetrate, all, right? All, it all. takes a lot of work it and a lot of dedication, a lot dedication. of relationship building, right? So, yes. how did you manage to do that? <laughs> um, Kofi's not in the camera, but he knows that it was a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Kofi, he's my producer and manager, mm -hmm. and he's the one that actually worked with me on this project. Okay. So Choke is actually part of my EP mm -hmm. project that's currently out, that's Euphoria Volume 1. Make okay. sure you listen to that, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music. Um, basically, when we decided on creating the video, it made me really realize, like you said, how much work goes into mm -hmm creating just a music video mm. and the big chunk of the stress honestly is the money mm. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's crazy so um that's what i was really stressed about because we were trying to figure out what director would be able to meet our needs mm. capture our vision because that's one of the biggest things with doing a video yeah. making sure that the vision matches maybe the feel of the right. music even right. if it's abstract it mm. still captures what you're going for mm. um so that was a hell mm -hmm. <laughs> at the beginning because we struggle trying to figure that out with directors yeah. and such but then like i said it's like god has been so gracious to me mm -hmm. the minute that it seems like we have no options 
something, something just happened. So That's we actually bumped into the director I mentioned, shout out to Jay Wills, at a party. Oh, okay. Like we had just stopped by Ali Bar mm -hmm. in Osu. Yeah. And he was there. And Kubi had a conversation with him. He's like, oh, like my artist, she's trying to do a video. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this was really happening right now. Yeah. And then when I realized that he actually had filmed a really great video uh, for Kubi and the artist he works with from the Mem Gang, mm. uh, that's when I said, oh, like you did that video? Mm. The, song, the song is called Energy, great video, you should check it out. Yeah. Uh, it would be, uh, I can't remember the artist now that was on it. I think it was RJ, yes, RJZ and for Bona. Mm -hmm. uh, great video, and when I saw that, I was like, this director is great. Mm -hmm. Not to know that he's the same guy. Wow. And we meet him there, and he mentioned him not too long ago, and, and he ended up being there, yeah. so that's how that started. And then he just genuinely liked the song. Mm -hmm. So he was all on board to actually work on the record with us. So I was mm -hmm. like, wow, okay, cool. Wow. And then the next the creative process is the mood board and all of these things, mm -hmm. and then acquiring the people and getting everything scheduled and organized is probably the most difficult and stressful part. Like, it's really annoying. Um, yeah, that's the difficult part, especially mm -hmm. if you will move on Ghana Man time. <laughs> I will tell you this right now. GMT. Running yeah. through this type of industry, you mm -hmm. cannot be on that time for certain things. Right. Especially music videos, mm -hmm. especially shows. And the reason why is organizing the team that you need to put mm -hmm. it together, mm -hmm. right? And you have to pay all these people. So budgeting yeah. is involved. So I had to find the right models, the right people to do my makeup, mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. the lighting guy, the one that's gonna handle the direction, mm -hmm. which was Jay, then the creative director, mm -hmm. which is Chantel. Shout out to Chantel. She's an amazing creative director and a photographer as well, right. who works with Jay. And yeah, like having to go through that whole process and then the long hours People mm -hmm. don't understand. It's not like yeah. we're on we're on the video shoot drinking and partying. Yeah. Like, it's literally all constructed. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, cut, shoot, cut, yeah. shoot. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that was so new to me. Not to mention I had a love interest in the video. Mm -hmm. I've never done that before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I did see so... it. Was a bit of a sexy <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that was so awkward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. so awkward for me. People don't understand. Don't get me wrong, like just because he's a good looking guy, yeah. it doesn't help me. Yeah. It's, it's easy to look at, uh -huh. but it makes you more nervous, number one. Yeah. And number two, it's not something that I've done before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had to learn how to get into character stretching and, yourself, really. and just feeling myself. Mm -hmm. Again, feeling your identity. Yeah. Like, okay, be Naya now. Like, how would Naya be yes. with this artist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of tap into that persona yeah. to yeah. feel comfortable on the shoot. And it was long. When we finished, I was tired. Yeah, I, I passed out probably in my my wardrobe <laughs> and I didn't like I don't even think I had time to shower or anything oh, I just wow. passed out for like yeah. a few hours before I could do anything cause wow. I was just so tired mm. yeah so it's, it's a it's long it's long and can be painful people mm -hmm. are not organized mm -hmm. timing is everything mm -hmm. but in the end of it all of course yeah. when you have the right director yeah. who understands the vision like he did mm. and you see the final thing it's worth that's it. it and that's the beauty exactly. of it so when i watch it now i'm so mm. proud of myself because never would i would think just what five six years ago mm. that i would be doing that yeah you know so do you think that ghana kind of helps it's easy to make connections here with people that are perhaps in the same industry or people that can help you out or you can help each other out. Do you feel like it's easier here than it would be somewhere else? I think yes, in the sense that Ghana is, especially Accra in general, because mm -hmm. this is the city where all these things happen when it comes mm -hmm. to creative process and music and business and entertainment mm -hmm. and everything of that nature. So it's like everybody knows everyone. Yeah. And it's really like, who knows you and who you know. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know one person and that one person can know 10 people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then maybe that one particular person that you need to know to, mm -hmm. the person that knows them, they don't know them like that. Mm -hmm. But then they might have a friend that yeah. knows them. Yeah. That's just how it is. So you kind of are able to tap into that mm -hmm. by just talking to the right people. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that knowing how our people can be very hospital it's very easy to make these kind of connections. Everybody's cool. They're, oh, that's my guy. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, then I'll help yeah. you out. That kind mm -hmm. of vibe, you get it. So I would say that for the most part, especially how amazing it is to work with someone um, like Kubi, who has such a broad network because mm -hmm. of his job, yeah. it made it so much easier for wow. me. Right? Cause I don't think by myself, especially being a woman, mm -hmm. I'll be able to do that. Because wow. that's definitely a big contrast.
Tell in this me country. about that. Now you just touched on something. Being a woman, how is it being a woman in such a field, or how is it trying to make moves in Ghana as a woman? How do you how do you find that? <laughs> I have to say that all the females that are entrepreneurs here mm -hmm. and doing things that are outside of what's considered accepted as a female or Ghanaian, mm -hmm. kudos to you. Because I know that a lot of pressure mm -hmm. comes with it, a lot of stress, a lot of discrimination yeah. and sexism and all mm -hmm. these things come mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And just being a musician, not even just Ghana, but mm -hmm. internationally as a woman, yeah. is like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful nightmare. Wow, okay. Because mm -hmm. um, you realize that you have the talent, it'll speak for itself, but yeah. it's the who you would deal with that will respect you yeah. because you're a woman. Okay. Um, and sad to say that um, it, it, I wouldn't say that there's any real difference or contrast between how Ghanaian men will treat women here or anywhere else. I just feel like it's a social issue globally where mm -hmm. I feel like women are not being respected enough or acknowledged for their place, mm -hmm. knowing how they are literally um, the givers of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a whole different right, conversation. Right, yeah. But just understanding the importance of a female presence mm -hmm. and how we actually distort that mm. right and exploit it it's yeah, wrong yeah and especially in the industry you see how they treat women mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. the video vixens to mm -hmm. how they use certain female artists yeah, and just yeah. dump them mm -hmm. all these type of things i've been literally a full victim to certain experience where i've been offered things on the table but at a cost right, you understand right. And that shit was just sickening to me to hear mm -hmm. because I'm like, I am not going to sell yeah. my dignity yeah. just so that you can put me on top. Yeah. I'd rather die. Then. Mm. At that point, I'll go back to doing the job that I hate. And wow. that's what it's going to be. I don't care. Wow. So you're pretty headstrong. Like, I didn't take... care. No one, yeah. no one was able to do that with me. That's mm. why there was a lot of guys that didn't want to help me yeah. or didn't like me because like, I'm too no or mm. like, chill, mm -hmm. How does he chill? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're showing yourself. That's wow. how I was saying. I can't like, you mm. think you're too big for people. You get it. And yeah. it's like, that's not it. Like, you wouldn't treat your fellow guy like that. Yeah, so why? But mm. why are you treating me like that? Because mm. I'm a woman? Mm. Come on. So mm. that's the big issue in all industries here. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but because yeah. we're talking about entertainment, mm -hmm. it's a big problem. Yeah. And I feel like that's why a lot of women are discouraged mm -hmm. um, because of how they know they'll face these challenges, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, again, the culture here, that's not really something that's acknowledged as a way of being a woman that can exemplify mm. this grace or virtue, mm. like a virtuous woman because you're an entertainer. What is that? Yeah. You know, you yeah. expect a woman who's getting in, mm -hmm. right, to be a good wife or if she is to have a job mm -hmm. or if she does have a job, it's, oh, she's a nurse or she's mm -hmm. a lawyer or she's yeah. this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that There's applies for the men the too. Yeah. It yeah. applies for the men too, but definitely mm -hmm. guys, I feel, and it's fair to say, they do get a little bit of a, a pass free card mm -hmm. because is not really as pressured mm -hmm. on them when it comes to career choices as it is for women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, since you've been in Ghana, what has what would you say has been your highest point so far about being here? Um, I would definitely say that my highest point now is being number one comfortable, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though there's so much chaos that goes on mm -hmm. around me. Mm -hmm. I now feel like I'm part of it. Yeah. I don't feel like a stranger anymore. Right. Even right. though obviously I'll still meet people that will acknowledge that I'm not from here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they, 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 I even feel it now. They treat me that way. So yeah. I actually get disrespected more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. more of a local now to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that too. It's either that or them feeling like I'm overprivileged. Is what yeah. I'm saying. And I'm like, if you saw how I was living over there, yeah. you would not think that, but they yeah. don't understand that. So that, that's definitely a pinnacle I've reached in my life now where mm -hmm. I feel comfortable and happy. Good. I've always been happy to be here, mm -hmm. but now I feel mm -hmm. like I've embodied that fully. Right. Number For one. That sense of belonging, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Number one. And number two, just so many amazing milestones that I've reached as an artist yeah. going in full time. That was mm -hmm. the biggest fear. Mm -hmm. And to just not care anymore. Like, I'm literally at the I don't give a damn mm -hmm. stage yeah. where it doesn't matter who says anything, what. Mm -hmm. I'm just like this. That's so, good. so that's what's amazing for me and just having mm. such an amazing support team to help me through that is a mm. blessing yeah. right if it's not god and my my, my birth givers my parents yeah yeah like the people that i work with in this mm. industry who we everybody that's been helping me and supporting me mm. my friends my family like yeah. i'm happy okay so, so in contrast what has been your lowest point 
I think it was pretty much the opposite, like feeling like I was lost. Like mm. when I came here, it's not really, okay, I shouldn't say lost, but I guess discriminated. Mm. People that I thought that would support me, I didn't really go the way I wanted it to be, mm. right? I mean, because they didn't understand my vision. I didn't mm. see that I was doing something productive. Yeah. So they were not taking me seriously. And then just finding a place to be comfortable and habitable mm -hmm. <laughs> became a whole issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I learned that in, in the end of the day, even when you have people that are close to you, even if yeah. it's your blood, mm -hmm. that you're at many times when it, you're doing certain things in life that they don't mm -hmm. understand, you're on your own. So that was a difficult thing, like having to process that, yo, I have to do a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. by myself, mm -hmm. right? Especially knowing how difficult it is um, to adjust to how the economy works in this country mm. is so crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. right no, like no. just mm. seeing the contrast of people who are living in a city that is literally 10 times more than their salary yeah. how do you survive it's just so true you know yeah. and especially now with what we've gone through with the mm. pandemic and everything mm. that's skyrocketed now. Yeah, yeah and then the many evident things which is another point i'll make is coming to the realization that even though i knew what it was when it came to the imbalance here and the corruption mm -hmm. being on the other side, mm. I didn't know enough until I actually lived here. Yes. yes. That's another thing. It's a different, yeah. So that was my lowest point, that feeling of pain mm. or sorrow mm. to see that this is the reality. Yeah. And I see it every day. Mm. You know, it's, it's uncomfortable for me mm. knowing that maybe I'm, I'm struggling with something that's so small, in my opinion, mm. because I can literally see someone coming to a window mm -hmm. and begging me for money. Yeah. You know, that stuff is not normal. Yeah. That shouldn't be normal. Yeah, absolutely. In a place where maybe just across from them, mm -hmm. there's an expensive building behind them. Mm -hmm, like, there's, mm -hmm. there's no balance there. Yeah, yeah. That's what bothers me. Mm -hmm. So it was coming to that realization that, yo, like, we have a lot we have to do. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah. And that, that's not discouraging, but that's the, I guess, the, 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 the frustrating part. Mm -hmm. So know? would you say that that is, in order for... The country to develop is do you think that it's about more diasporans coming back or do you think it's about change within the people who are already here i guess you call them local Ghanaians. what what do you think could spark the change in order for things to get better so there isn't such a class division because it's it's so apparent isn't it <laughs> yeah i don't know it's it's crazy but it for me it's both to be mm. honest um and it's sad because I'm really seeing how much discrimination there is by classicism in this country, mm -hmm. even within the local system. Yeah. Because those who feel like they've achieved something mm -hmm. or made it, all of a sudden, everybody else is not important. Yes. And yeah. they're not getting it that mm -hmm. when you're working with these same people and building with them, mm -hmm. you become more wealthy. Yes. So they're not understanding that mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. And I find that that contributes to a lot of the corruption as mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. Right? But I feel like changing that mentality if you're seeing more and more diasporans who understand this mm -hmm. that come here and they can actually contribute that knowledge to our people here yeah they'll open their ears mm -hmm. their eyes and their and their brain their brains their yeah. minds yeah. right because mm -hmm. we don't even have a proper proper curriculum mm -hmm. to help our locals identify with who they are we don't mm -hmm. so it's like you if you can't even start from there where you know who you are as a person yeah. and what your history is and if you know actually my lineage is regal mm -hmm. i was never poor i was yeah. not a slave how they say mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of black americans or diasporans had to learn mm -hmm. that they understand now they're mm -hmm. starting to see that now mm -hmm. so that's why i feel like now that it's becoming more apparent, it's, now is the timing to make it something where we're literally pushing that yeah. whole agenda. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And that's why I really I admire the fact that when it comes to the system here, how they managed to bring this concept of the year of return, that was the most brilliant idea ever. Mm -hmm. Because that literally bridged that gap yeah. and opened the eyes of most diasporans to see what's really going on. Because mm -hmm. it not only sparked something for Ghana, but the whole Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You understand it? Because it's, it's setting the example. Mm -hmm. It's setting the example. It's like, hmm, if they're going to Ghana, this is what can be. Mm -hmm. If these type of people are here, this is what it can be. Exactly. Then why the hell am I mm -hmm. wasting my time over here? Yeah. You know, and don't get me wrong. I don't want people to have this misconception where they can't be successful outside of Ghana. Mm -hmm. I just feel like people should acknowledge the fact that you're in a land or a territory that doesn't belong to you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, maybe you'll build a property, whatever. 
but it would be really a waste if you, that contribution is staying there. Mm, mm. You should be able to take over. The whole point is for us to take over as a whole. Yeah. That's what we, because we can have our own conglomerate mm -hmm. as a community in every part of the world. Yes. But if we're not tackling the land that belongs to us, then what mm. are we really doing? Yeah. Why are you developing somewhere that's stolen from other people that mm -hmm. you built on your back? Yeah, yeah. And then you're letting them come here and literally exploit and steal mm -hmm. from it on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And you take nothing out of that? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Because yeah. guess what? Those same things that they steal, mm -hmm. they use it to develop that stranger land that you live in over there. Because they don't have nothing over there. Yeah. They don't. Mm -hmm. And they know that. They need us to survive. Mm -hmm. So that's my reason for why can't that be internalized mm -hmm. why are we not doing that yeah. that doesn't that's not an excuse but you can make all the time and mm -hmm. work that hard to do all that over there that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. so i said why am i gonna kill myself in canada mm -hmm. work hard to build a home and all this and then i didn't i don't have anything mm -hmm. in my own land that just mm -hmm. didn't make sense to me yeah. it doesn't so what would you say to someone who feels the itch to want to come and move to, to africa anyway in africa I would say go for it, but obviously um, plan. Take your time and plan. Mm. Don't rush. Yeah, yeah. That I'll see. Mm -hmm. I will I would be sitting here and say it's cap yeah. if I knew exactly what I was doing when I was coming here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had, there are some parts I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Because mm -hmm. I'm coming with no real background when it comes to a uh, way to feed myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number one. Yeah. And that's number one, that's important. You have to be able to survive. You mm -hmm. need the money to survive. So I didn't have no proper income, right? I got fired and then I started doing odd jobs before coming here. Mm -hmm. So it's really in the twisted spirit of things, mm -hmm. even though it's not a good thing, when COVID came, I was able to get a little money mm -hmm. and, and save it and reinvest yeah. it to do what I'm doing right now. So does your, does your business now support you financially? It definitely supports me. I'm, I'm working on other business ventures for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but being art an artist part-time is opening those opportunities and doors for me wow. as well. Oh, nice. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Number two, my parents, God bless them, they're also very well invested in my music. So they're oh, really my nice. investors, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to your parents. Shout out to mom and daddy. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so apart from me just being smart with how I spend my own money mm. um, with their investments, that's how I've been able to create a reality for myself yeah. here. But the next step, obviously, is developing. It's, it's a progressive thing. Mm. As I said, plan well, mm. right? Maybe for me, I knew that my lifeline was having amazing parents that will support me. Yeah. But that shouldn't be your lifeline forever. I'm, I'm mm. a grown woman. I'm 31 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. can't be my lifeline yeah. forever. Yeah, of I need my own thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not because I, I took anything from them because, mm. I was again, I was lucky to have my own. Mm. But eventually, I can't rely on mm. just whatever I was able to bring up for myself in one shot, I need mm. to have something that is continuous, yeah, you know, right? Yeah. Residual income, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And that's a hard thing to do in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. A very hard thing mm -hmm, to do, mm -hmm. um, unless maybe you have a certain educational background mm. and not everybody has access to that. And even the ones who do have the jobs, mm. the pay is trash. <laughs> the type of things that I'm hearing, no, like yeah, it's yeah, bad. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah, need to do tough. better. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. is crazy. Like mm -hmm, I'm hearing mm -hmm. that people are literally surviving off of maybe 400, 500 Ghana mm -hmm. in a month. Yeah. And then their rent is like a thousand Ghana. I'm like, how are yeah, they gonna afford that? And yeah. it's not like they're paying month to month. They're paying for a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How does that make any sense? How can you ask? For more than let's say two three thousand ghana up front mm -hmm. uh, for a whole year for an apartment yeah that's insane that's why most people here have different streams of income income yeah because you cannot have just one thing no it's say, impossible this is what i'm doing and that's it's it. so impossible unless can't. maybe you're in something big like mm -hmm. real estate mm -hmm. even big people that i know some of my friends who are doing it and all these things they have all these little side gigs yeah, that they do yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to. But even if you're in real estate, you still you're need still to doing have something. Other I'm just saying yeah. that they're comfortable because with them, they're high demand. Yeah, they're always building something. Mm -hmm. They're always doing some project. Yeah, you get it. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, like yeah, with my fields, like technology, it's a mm -hmm. good paycheck. It's decent, yeah. so, especially if you're a programmer. Mm -hmm. If you're a programmer, um, if you're really good with networking, network security mm -hmm. is wicked checks. Yeah. But at the same time. Like the way that the economy works, you're still forced to do something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, I have friends that are actually like computer geniuses, but they mm -hmm. still try to sell cars. They try to do this. Yeah, it's crazy. You have to. You have yeah. To. So yeah. I'm like, this is this is this is what I actually 
appreciate though because it taught me mm -hmm. to be hard mm -hmm. i feel like being over there is not because you don't have responsibilities but because things are so easily accessible to you mm -hmm. you become too soft yeah you come too soft it's i have true. to be honest with you yeah. right now like yeah. being in in canada i feel like you're someone who is not necessarily ignorant or blind but you don't know anything when it comes to hustling mm -hmm. unless you are really that person that is a hardcore hustler yeah because they make it so easy for you you can yeah, literally you have a baby and stay at home and do nothing <laughs> so like yeah, yeah so i'm just being honest there's people that do that they mm -hmm. live off of checks yeah, stay home yeah, yeah, yeah. so they'll literally have children to stay home mm -hmm. so those type of things make it too hard on you because mm -hmm. guess what it's crippling you yeah it's crippling mm -hmm. you to mm -hmm. be very honest mm -hmm. that's what it's doing yeah so when you come nice. here it's like whoa like because i'm so. meeting kids that are doing five six jobs and they're ten times younger than me mm -hmm, mm -hmm, i'm like what yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you know what i'm saying and so that's admirable for me like mm -hmm. that's humbling for me to see how intelligent mm -hmm. and how hard working a lot of the kids here are mm -hmm. uh, and young adults like myself yeah it's just it's amazing mm -hmm. even given all the chaos yeah you get it so yeah that was definitely the har the hardest thing mm -hmm. just having to process that and adjusting wow. to that yeah. Wow. yeah well thank you so much for talking to oh, me thank today you. i thank feel like you. i've learned so much from you you've oh, been an awesome i'm, I'm, I'm learning i'm learning from you too. <laughs> we're learning from each other <laughs> <laughs> thank you for so, having thank me you. Again. so you have a new um single coming out right yes What's it yes called? it's called d4m it's actually an acronym for dance for me Mm. and it's dropping on friday july 8th so make sure you guys catch that song again on all streaming platforms mm -hmm. spotify boomplay apple music and very soon i'll be dropping my ep as well that set date is coming but i won't say it yet because i'm okay. not supposed to okay. um, but very soon after the first two singles that come from this tape i'll announce the date as well awesome. and you can follow me on all social platforms uh is i am i a m underscore n y a underscore for twitter instagram TikTok. i'm there Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Duh. So guys, please be sure to follow Naya on all her social media. See what she's up to. Just just watch her career take off even more, you know. It's going to happen, right? It's going to happen. Thank you. So, Amen. I'm, I'm, when you're saying that, I'm receiving it too. I'm yeah, receiving, the, receive it, receive the it. Yeah. Thank you. Natural girl is seeing it. <laughs> we're going to talk about this again. Uh -huh. We are. And she, sure. We're going to talk about how I want my Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'll be sure to follow you. Keep up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bless you. Thank but you. But guys, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you would just do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to also like, comment, and share this video. Until next time, I'm out. Thank you. <laughs>